So I'm standing here by the Glenarm River at the bottom of Glenarm Glen, which stretches for three miles behind me. And this is a story that was collected from Glenarm by Jack McBride in the 70s. And this telling owes much to him. A long time ago, but not so far from living memory, there was a woman lived up the Glen. We'll call her Mary. And Mary had her own wee cottage. And out the back there was a byre with a cow. And in the yard there was a few hens. And Mary, well, she wasn't married, she lived on her own, but she had a special skill. In most villages and places in those days, there would be a woman who would assist all the local women when they were given birth. And Mary was one of those women. Sometimes they were called handy women. And that was a perfect name for Mary because she had strong but gentle hands. The perfect hands for bringing new souls into this world, or sometimes helping the old ones pass on into the next. So Mary was used to being woken at all hours of the night when her services were required, and she was well respected and well liked. So it was no surprise to her when one dark stormy night an urgent knock came to her door, and when Mary took her little rushlight to see who it was, there was a young man standing there, no more than three foot tall, and his face ashen white. Please, hurry, come, my wife needs you. She's in a lot of agony. Well, Mary didn't need to be asked twice. She went and got her basket of things, and outside there was a coach waiting to take her further up the glen. She got into the coach and it was only after a little while she began to, to wonder why she couldn't hear the, the hooves of the horses travelling on the road. And although the carriage of the coach was comfortable enough, she felt a little bit imprisoned in it and a little bit of unease stirred in her stomach. When finally the coach stopped, Mary alighted down onto the ground and the young man stood there with a blindfold. He wanted to blindfold her and this alarmed her a little bit more. But she knew one thing. She knew that no violence was ever offered to a doctor or a midwife. And so she let him put the blindfold on and he took her by the hand and he led her through what seemed to be a cave because she could hear the water dropping down the wall. When finally they stopped and the blindfold came off, Mary was standing in front of a miniature castle with turrets and lights blazing in all the windows. And the young man took her in and the place was silent except for one far room where she could hear the cries of a woman in some distress. When Mary entered the room, there was a young woman in the bed. She was crying, her brow was fevered, and Mary, with one of her strong, gentle hands, she put her hand on her brow and she calmed her, and she felt the baby in the woman's belly. Well, Mary had to work with the baby in the belly a lot before finally she delivered a little baby. And this was the smallest morsel of baby Mary had ever delivered. But the woman in the bed was no more than two foot tall. She cleaned the baby, she gave it to the woman. And then she went to gather her things together to leave. For by now, Mary had a good idea that she was in the land of fairy. But when she got to the door of that castle, the two little doorkeepers crossed their lances to stop her leaving. And the young man with the ashen face came running. You cannot leave now, he said. You must stay until the queen, my wife, is up and on her feet again. Well, Mary was in no position to refuse. But she knew one thing. She knew that she should not eat any food or drink anything that was offered to her from the fairy realm or they would be able to keep her there indefinitely. And so she said she would stay. 
but that food should be brought to her from her own glen in her own realm. Well, to this the young man agreed, and he told her that her own cow and hens would be well looked after. And so she stayed on, caring for the little bairn and the mother. When the time came for her to leave, that morning the young man came and told her that she must never speak of what she had seen here to anyone. And he gave her a little jar of ointment to rub on the baby's head. Well, there she was, rubbing the baby's head with the ointment. When an itch came on her right eye and she lifted her finger to scratch it. The next thing Mary knew, she was back in her own wee cottage. And there on the dresser, there was a golden purse. And when she lifted up, it was full of gold coins. And when she went out into the yard to check on her hens and look for a cow, she discovered that the number of hens was double what it had been. And in the byre there were two cows where there had been one. She had indeed been well rewarded for her services. And she wondered if it had really happened or been a dream. But then when the neighbours asked her if the lovely dumb girl that had looked after the place while she was gone was some relation, she realised that she really had been away. Well, a few days later, Mary took the little purse and she took out a few coins to go into Glenorm village to the shop on the village street to buy herself a few treats. And she went into the shop and what did she see but two wee fairy folk with baskets over their arms, helping themselves to all and sundry. And the shopkeeper seeming not to see anything. Indignantly, she said, are you stealing? Well, the wee fairy folk, they looked up at her. Can you see us? Surely I can, with my own eyes. One of them said, with both eyes. And Mary held a hand up to each eye in turn. No, she said, only with my right eye. Well, that's lucky for you, said one of the wee fairy men, and he jumped up and he gave her such a blow in the eye that she stepped back. And that was the last that Mary would ever see out of that eye. And when she made her way up the glen to her own wee cottage, there was but one cow where there had been two, and the original number of hens was back to what it had been. And when she went inside, the golden purse was empty. All she was left with was a couple of coins she'd put in her apron pocket, which is what she would normally have received for her services. But on the table there was a note, and the note said, When a blind man has his sight restored, your goal shall be found up in Strayed Killy, which is just a couple of miles up the road from here. Well, after that, Mary, she died a poor old woman, for what use is a midwife with just one eye? And that's the story they tell. And as far as I know, that fairy gold has never been found, though many's a one has been up strayed killy, searching for it. <laughs>